Hi, I'm Peter Hart. Welcome back to FAIR TV. Let's take a look at some of what has been in the news this week. Is the Obama administration going dovish? You might get that idea if you watch some of the recent coverage about Barack Obama's second term cabinet picks. Former Republican Senator Chuck Hagel is his nominee to run the Pentagon, and he's picked Senator John Kerry as his next Secretary of State. The Hagel nomination, of course, has attracted considerable controversy, largely due to this bogus argument that he's too soft on Iran and too critical of Israel. But the notion that Hagel has some deep aversion to U.S. war making deserves some scrutiny, too. ABC News talked about Hegel's outspoken opposition to the Iraq War. And here's NBC Nightly News. The independent-minded Republican frequently clashed with members of his own party opposing the Iraq War. Now, that is a strange way to describe a politician who voted for the Iraq invasion. He supported the Afghan War, too. And during NATO's bombing of Serbia, he talked about the possibility of sending in ground troops. And take a look at the January 9th New York Times, which tried to argue that both Kerry and Hegel's Vietnam experience meant they had the same sensibility about the futility of war. But their records tell a different story, one that the media is largely missing. Well, we survived the fiscal cliff, at least for a little while, but there are plenty of pundits who are not happy about the outcome. What's getting them mad is worth a look. The priority for elite media was a balanced, quote-unquote, grand bargain. Lots of spending cuts to go along with some tax increases. They're mad because they're not seeing the cuts they had hoped for. Thus, wealthy pundits are making the very moralistic case that the elderly need to sacrifice. On Meet the Press, Tom Brokaw chided Barack Obama for not being tougher on the AARP. He should have done more to cut Social Security benefits. Tom Friedman at the New York Times hoped Obama was through with all this hammering the wealthy and that tax hikes would give him, quote, credibility with his base to then make big spending cuts in the next round of negotiations, close quote. In Time magazine, Joe Klein complained that Democrats have, quote, a tendency to defend corroded industrial age welfare and entitlement programs, close quote. And in this column, Jonathan Alter, Democrats must learn to live with and vote for changes in entitlements. And it goes on and on. Of course, there are plenty of ways the government could shore up Medicare without making seniors and the sick pay more for their health care. The fact that the argument that says, no, actually they should pay more, is so dominant in the corporate media tells you a lot. And finally, last year, the New York Post made a few strenuous and bogus efforts to link the Occupy Wall Street movement to violence. And they closed out the year with one more. After New York police discovered a cache of weapons in a Manhattan couple's apartment, the December 31st Post described one of the suspects, Aaron Green, as a, quote, Harvard grad and Occupy Wall Street activist, close quote. Now, no one associated with the Occupy movement knew anything about this guy, but the Post's unsourced allegation was repeated by the Associated Press and by CBS this morning on January 2nd. The show told viewers that Occupy denied any links to him. But CBS didn't leave it there. They followed that with this soundbite from Mitchell Silb of K2 Intelligence. The assumption is that the vast majority of the people there were, were peaceful protesters, but there was a more radical fringe element to the group, and there was a concern that at some point they might turn to violence if they weren't accomplishing their political aims. It's bad enough to treat an unsubstantiated claim from a partisan news outlet with a record of sensational misinformation on the very same subject as a relevant fact in a news story. But how do you justify using this junk journalism to let a source give free reign to his fantasies about how Occupy might turn to violence? Way to go, CBS. I'm Peter Hart. Thanks for tuning in to FAIR TV.